It has been three weeks since an earthquake and tsunami in Japan killed thousands of people and triggered the crisis at a nuclear power plant. The International Atomic Energy Agency now says unsafe levels of radiation were detected in a village 24 miles from the plant. That is outside the 20-mile radius of the evacuation zone. Japan is seeking out more international help. A team of U.S. Marines trained in how to respond to nuclear emergencies arrives in Tokyo today. The military has also provided a barge capable of carrying water to help cool the reactors at the plant. Meanwhile, low levels of radioactive fallout from the Fukushima plant has been detected in milk on the west coast of the United States. Experts believe a cow may have eaten tainted grass or drank rainwater containing the radioactive material. Health officials say it is unlikely any medical problems will develop in the United States. For more, nuclear safety expert Cham Dallas joins us by phone from Georgia. Cham, thanks for being with us. Good to be here, Betty. I want to run down some facts that we know so far. There are unsafe radiation levels outside the evacuation zone. There is contamination now in groundwater under the plant, 10,000 times the standard limit. And the radiation in seawater near the plant is at its highest level yet. Why is this taking so long to get under control? Well, I'm actually uh, more disturbed by the increase in the radiation levels in the seawater. Um, since yesterday to today, that's gone up about 25 percent. So there's, a, there's an increase going on. Um, the, the levels are high directly under the reactor, but the fact that what's getting farther and farther from the reactor is, is increasing is, is the most disturbing well, uh, news that of that mean? because it shows a trend. A okay. negative trend. Okay, yeah, explain that. Explain what that negative trend means. Well, it means there's a continuous release of radiation. Um, you know, radiation, once it gets out of a reactor, it tends to sit in a, one spot. Uh, even in water, it'll go down into the sediments. But when it increases, that means you're putting more into the system over time. That means more of it's getting out. And that means whatever leak or whatever process is getting that radiation out of the reactor is continuing. So it's not just one release and that's it. There's more and more coming out and, gotcha. and that's a negative. Cham, this plant has been spewing radioactive material for weeks. We've been watching it. You and I have been talking about it. How long before it becomes a problem for those of us here in the United States? Well, that's probably the good news out of all this, if you can find some good news, is that um, it's unlikely to get to levels to the United States that are dangerous enough to affect us anytime soon. I'd like to point out that Chernobyl, where I spent all those years with a total meltdown uh, 25 years ago, um, that was 100 times more radioactivity than we've seen here yet, and yet even that radioactivity did not get to the United States uh, across the ocean in large enough amounts to hurt people here. It hurt people over in Russia and Belarus and Ukraine, but even with a hundred times more than what we've seen here so far, it wasn't enough to hurt people in the United States. So that is a protective piece of data for us in this accident at, in Japan. I want to talk about the drinking water. How serious is it that the groundwater underneath the plant has radiation levels 10,000 times higher than the standard limit? Is that something that can actually get into the drinking water and affect those who will be drinking it in Japan? Well, not in the immediate future, but I'd like to point out that these disasters, these nuclear-related disasters, they go on for decades. It was, it's over 25 years since the Chernobyl accident, and we're still dealing with the radioactivity that got out of that reactor then. These things go on for a long time. So since, the lo since these problems are long term, um, we're probably looking at some problems for the Japanese in their drinking water long term. Right now, in the immediate, it's not there, but it's, like I said, it's a negative trend. It's trending in the wrong direction. There have also been reports that uh, are very critical of TEPCO, the company that owns the plant. One found that TEPCO wasn't prepared for a disaster. Another found that the workers in the plant have not all been given radiation monitors. That is a violation of government rules. Is TEPCO in charge of the situation? They are actually in charge. This is a private company that has been in charge of this from the beginning. Uh, they've made all the decisions. Uh, for instance, the decision to pull the workers out of the reactor room that one time when they exceeded 100 millisieverts of reactivity. They're in charge. Okay, and, but uh, is it time for another agency is. to step in and take the lead, given the information that we know? 
Well, now there is a very interesting question. You know, there have been a number of uh, people, uh, especially in government circles, that have been making just that suggestion, or I should say this, that demand. When is it to the responsibility of a governing body to tell them to step aside and, and, and they go in? Um, that has not happened, and I don't think it's likely to happen in the near term. I want to ask about the workers inside the plant. Many of them have a knowledge that they may not survive. How much longer can they keep up this work at that plant and what happens if the work isn't done and they can't continue? Well, there is more of, of a negative outcome in this in this saga, the story as it goes on. Those people actually, because of the levels are there, we, we've heard of uh, some of these workers getting over 100 millisieverts, but not more than 250. That means that they could go on for a long time. Uh, even though the long-term aspects for them are quite negative, uh, it does mean that because they're getting less than 250 millisieverts, they could stay there for a long time, uh, even though they're not, see, it's not enough to cause immediate harm for them, but it is definitely enough to cause harm for them later. So it means they can stick around and continue to do this work, essentially sacrificing themselves uh, for everyone else, for the rest of us bunch of brave people there. All right. Nuclear safety expert Cham Dallas with a lot of insight for us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Betty.